Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. Textbook of Biology, Class 11th, Chapter 18, Body Fluids and Circulation, narrated by Priyadarshini Hada. You have learnt that all living cells have to be provided with nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances. Also the waste or harmful substances produced have to be removed continuously for healthy functioning of tissues. It is therefore essential to have efficient mechanisms for the movement of these substances to the cells and from the cells. Different groups of animals have evolved different methods for this transport. Simple organisms like sponges, sealantrates circulate water from their surroundings through their body cavities to facilitate the cells to exchange these substances. More complex organisms use special fluids within their bodies to transport such materials. Blood is the most commonly used body fluid by most of the higher organisms including humans for this purpose. Another body fluid, lymph also helps in the transport of certain substances. In this chapter, you will learn about the composition and properties of blood and lymph and the mechanism of circulation of blood is also explained herein. Topic 18.1 Blood Blood is a special connective tissue consisting of a fluid matrix, plasma and formed elements. Topic 18.1.1 Plasma Plasma is a straw-colored, viscous fluid constituting nearly 55% of the blood. 90-92% to of plasma is water and proteins contribute 6-8% of it. Fibrinogen, globulins and albumins are the major proteins. Fibrinogens are needed for clotting or coagulation of blood. Globulins primarily are involved in defense mechanism of the body and the albumins help in osmotic balance. Plasma also contains small amounts of minerals like sodium, calcium, magnesium, bicarbonate, chloride, etc. Glucose, amino acids, lipids, etc. are also present in the plasma as they are always in transit in the body. Factors for coagulation or clotting of blood are also present in the plasma in an inactive form. Plasma without the clotting factors is called serum. Topic 18.1.2 Formed Elements Erythrocytes, leukocytes and platelets are collectively called formed elements figure 18.1 and they constitute nearly 45% of the blood. Erythrocytes or red blood cells are the most abundant of all the cells in blood. A healthy adult man has on an average 5 million to 5.5 million of RBCs per mm cube of blood. RBCs are formed in the red bone marrow in the adults. RBCs are devoid of nucleus in most of the mammals and are biconcave in shape. They have a red colored iron containing complex protein called hemoglobin, hence the color and the name of these cells. A healthy individual has 12 to 16 grams of hemoglobin in every 100 ml of blood. These molecules play a significant role in transport of respiratory gases. RBCs have an average lifespan of 120 days after which they are destroyed in the spleen or graveyard of RBCs. Leukocytes are also known as white blood cells as they are colorless due to the lack of hemoglobin. They are nucleated and are relatively less in number which averages 6000 to 8000 per mm cube of blood. Leukocytes are generally short-lived. We have two main categories of WBCs, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Neutrophils, eosinophils and basophils are different types of granulocytes while lymphocytes and monocytes are the agranulocytes. Neutrophils are the most abundant cells, 60-65% to 65 of the total WBCs and basophils are the least, 0.5-1% among them. Neutrophils and monocytes, 6-8% to 8%, are phagocytic cells which destroy foreign organisms entering the body. Basophils secrete histamine, serotonin, heparin, etc. and are involved in inflammatory reactions. Eosinophils resist infections and are also associated with allergic reactions. 
lymphocytes are of two major types b and t forms both b and t lymphocytes are responsible for immune responses of the body platelets are also called thrombocytes are cell fragments produced from megakaryocytes blood normally contains 150000 to 350000 platelets per mm cube platelets can release a variety of substances most of which are involved in the coagulation or clotting of blood a reduction in their number can lead to clotting disorders which will lead to excessive loss of blood from the body topic 18.1.3 blood groups as you know blood of human beings differ in certain aspects though it appears to be similar various types of grouping of blood has been done two such groupings the abo and rh are widely used all over the world topic 18.1.3.1 abo grouping abo grouping is based on the presence or absence of two surface antigens on the rbcs namely a and b similarly the plasma of different individuals contain two natural antibodies proteins produced in response to antigens the distribution of antigens and antibodies in the four groups of blood a b ab and o are given in table 18.1 you probably know that during the blood transfusion any blood cannot be used the blood of a donor has to be carefully matched with the blood of a recipient before any blood transfusion to avoid severe problems of clumping the donor's compatibility is as shown in table 18.1 from the above mentioned table it is evident that group o blood can be donated to persons with any other blood group and hence o group individuals are called universal donors persons with ab group can accept the blood from persons with ab as well as the other groups of blood therefore such persons are called universal recipients topic 18.1.3.2 rh grouping another antigen the rh antigen similar to one present in rhesus monkeys is also observed on the surface of rbcs of majority of humans such individuals are called rh positive and those in whom this antigen is absent are called rh negative an rh negative person if exposed to rh positive blood will form specific antibodies against the rh antigens therefore rh group should also be matched before transfusions a special case of rh incompatibility has been observed between rh negative blood of a pregnant mother with rh positive blood of the fetus rh antigens of the fetus do not get exposed to the rh negative blood of the mother in the first pregnancy as the two bloods are well separated by the placenta however during the delivery of the first child there is a possibility of exposure of the maternal blood to some amounts of the rh positive blood from the fetus in such cases the mother starts preparing antibodies against rh antigen in her blood in case of her subsequent pregnancies the rh antibodies from the mother rh negative can leak into the blood of the fetus which is rh positive and destroy the fetal rbcs this could be fatal to the fetus or could cause severe anemia and jaundice to the baby this condition is called erythroblastosis fetalis this can be avoided by administering anti rh antibodies to the mother immediately after the delivery of the first child topic 18.1.4 coagulation of blood you know that when you cut your finger or hurt yourself your wound does not continue to bleed for a long time usually the blood stops flowing after some time do you know why blood exhibits coagulation or clotting in response to an injury or trauma this is a mechanism to prevent excessive loss of blood from the body you would have observed a dark reddish brown scum formed at the site of a cut or an injury over a period of time it is a clot or coagulum formed mainly of a network of threads called fibrins in which dead and damaged formed elements of blood are trapped fibrins are formed by the conversion of inactive fibrinogens in the plasma by the enzyme thrombin thrombins in turn are formed from another inactive substance present in the plasma called prothrombin an enzyme complex 
thrombokinase is required for the above reaction. This complex is formed by a series of linked enzymatic reactions involving a number of factors present in the plasma in an inactive state. An injury or a trauma stimulates the platelets in the blood to release certain factors which activate the mechanism of coagulation. Certain factors released by the tissues at the site of injury also can initiate coagulation. Calcium ions play a very important role in clotting. Topic 18.2 Lymph or Tissue Fluid As the blood passes through the capillaries in tissues, some water along with many small water-soluble substances move out into the spaces between the cells of tissues, leaving the larger proteins and most of the formed elements in the blood vessels. This fluid released out is called the interstitial fluid or tissue fluid. It has the same mineral distribution as that in plasma. Exchange of nutrients, gases, etc. between the blood and the cells always occur through this fluid. An elaborate network of vessels called the lymphatic system collects this fluid and drains it back to the major veins. The fluid present in the lymphatic system is called the lymph. Lymph is a colorless fluid containing specialized lymphocytes which are responsible for the immune responses of the body. Lymph is also an important carrier for nutrients, hormones, etc. Fats are absorbed through lymph in the lacteals present in the intestinal villi. Topic 18.3 Circulatory Pathways The circulatory patterns are of two types, open or closed. Open circulatory system is present in arthropods and mollusks in which blood pumped by the heart passes through large vessels into open spaces or body cavities called sinuses. Annelids and chordates have a closed circulatory system in which the blood pumped by the heart is always circulated through a closed network of blood vessels. This pattern is considered to be more advantageous as the flow of fluid can be more precisely regulated. All vertebrates possess a muscular chambered heart. Fishes have a two-chambered heart with an atrium and a ventricle. Amphibians and the reptiles have a three-chambered heart with two atria and a single ventricle, whereas crocodiles, birds and mammals possess a four-chambered heart with two atria and two ventricles. In fishes, the heart pumps out deoxygenated blood which is oxygenated by the gills and supplied to the body parts from where deoxygenated blood is returned to the heart or single circulation. In amphibians and reptiles, the left atrium receives oxygenated blood from the gills or lungs or skin and the right atrium gets the deoxygenated blood from other parts of the body. However, they get mixed up in the single ventricle which pumps out mixed blood, that is incomplete double circulation. In birds and mammals, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood received by the left and right atria respectively passes on to the ventricles of the same sites. The ventricles pump it out without any mixing up, that is, two separate circulatory pathways are present in these organisms. Hence, these animals have double circulation. Let us study the human circulatory system. Topic 18.3.1 Human Circulatory System Human circulatory system, also called the blood vascular system, consists of a muscular chambered heart, a network of closed branching blood vessels and blood, the fluid which is circulated. Heart The mesodermally derived organ is situated in the thoracic cavity in between the two lungs slightly tilted to the left. It has the size of a clenched fist. It is protected by a double-walled membranous bag pericardium enclosing the pericardial fluid. Our heart has four chambers, two relatively small upper chambers called atria and two longer lower chambers called ventricles. A thin muscular wall called the interatrial septum separates the right and the left atria, whereas a thick wall, the interventricular septum, separates the left and the right ventricles. Figure 18.2 The atrium and the ventricles of the same side are also separated by a thick fibrous tissue called the atrioventricular septum. However, each of these septa are provided with an opening through which the two chambers of the same side are connected. The opening between the right atrium and the right ventricle is guarded by a valve formed by three muscular flaps or cusp, the tricuspid valve, 
वेर एज अ बाइकस्पिड और मिट्रल वेल गार्ड द ओपनिंग बिटवीन द लेफ्ट एट्रियम एंड द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल द ओपनिंग्स ऑफ द राइट एंड द लेफ्ट वेंट्रिकल्स इन टू द पलमोनरी आर्ट्री एंड द एटा रिस्पेक्टिवली आर प्रोवाइडेड विद द सेमिलर वेल्स The valves in the heart allows the flow of blood only in one direction that is from atria to the ventricles and from ventricles to the pulmonary artery or aorta These valves prevent any backward flow the entire heart is made of cardiac muscles the walls of ventricles are much thicker than that of atria a specialized cardiac musculature called the nodal tissue is also distributed in the heart figure 18.2 A patch of this tissue is present in the right upper corner of the right atrium called the sinoatrial node. Another mass of this tissue is seen in the lower left corner of the right atrium close to the atrioventricular septum called the atrioventricular node or AVN. A bundle of nodal fibers, atrioventricular bundle, AV bundle continues from the AVN which passes through the atrioventricular septa to emerge on the top of the interventricular septum and immediately divides into a right and the left bundle. These branches give rise to minute fibers throughout the ventricular musculature of the respective sites and are called Purkinje fibers. The nodal musculature has the ability to generate action potentials without any external stimuli. That is it is auto excitable. However, the number of action potentials that could be generated in a minute vary at different parts of the nodal system. The SA node can generate the maximum number of action potential that is 70 to 75 per minute and is responsible for initiating and maintaining the rhythmic contractile activity of the heart therefore it is called the pacemaker our heart normally beats 70 to 75 times in a minute average 72 beats per minute topic 18.3.2 cardiac cycle how does the heart function let us take a look To begin with all the four chambers of heart are in a relaxed state that is they are in joint diastole as the tricuspid and bicuspid valves are open blood from the pulmonary veins and vena cava flows into the left and the right ventricle respectively through the left and the right atria the semilunar valves are closed at this stage the sa node now generates an action potential which stimulates both the atria to undergo a simultaneous contraction the atrial systole this increases the flow of blood into the ventricles by about 30% the action potential is conducted to the ventricular side by av node and av bundle from where the bundle of his transmit it through the entire ventricular musculature this causes the ventricular muscles to contract or ventricular systole and the atria undergoes relaxation that is diastole coinciding with the ventricular systole ventricular systole increases the ventricular pressure causing the closure of tricuspid and bicuspid valves due to attempted back flow of blood into the atria as the ventricular pressure increases further the semilunar valves guarding the pulmonary artery and the aorta are forced open allowing the blood in the ventricles to flow through these vessels into the circulatory pathways the ventricles now relax and the ventricular pressure falls causing the closure of semilunar valves which prevents the back flow of blood into the ventricles as the ventricular pressure declines further the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves are pushed open by the pressure in the atria exerted by the blood which was being emptied into them by the veins the blood now once again moves freely into the ventricles The ventricles and atria are now again in a relaxed or joint diastole state as earlier. Soon the SA node generates a new action potential and the events described above are repeated in that sequence and the process continues. This sequential event in the heart which is cyclically repeated is called the cardiac cycle and it consists of systole and diastole of both the atria and ventricles. As mentioned earlier the heart beats 72 times per minute that is that many cardiac cycles are performed per minute from this it could be deduced that the duration of a cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds during a cardiac cycle each ventricle pumps out approximately 70 ml of blood which is called the stroke volume 
the stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate or number of beats per minute gives the cardiac output. Therefore, the cardiac output can be defined as the volume of blood pumped out by each ventricle per minute which averages 5000 ml or 5 liters in a healthy individual. The body has the ability to alter the stroke volume as well as the heart rate and thereby the cardiac output. For example, the cardiac output of an athlete will be much higher than that of an ordinary man. During each cardiac cycle, two prominent sounds are produced which can be easily heard through a stethoscope. The first heart sound lub is associated with the closure of the tricuspid and the bicuspid valves, whereas the second heart sound dub is associated with the closure of the semilunar valves. These sounds are of clinical diagnostic significance. Topic 18.3.3 Electrocardiograph ECG you are probably familiar with this scene from a typical hospital television show. A patient is hooked up to a monitoring machine that shows voltage traces on a screen and makes the sound pip 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 pee as the patient goes into the cardiac arrest. This type of machine is used to obtain an electrocardiogram. ECG is a graphical representation of the electrical activity of the heart during a cardiac cycle. To obtain a standard ECG as shown in figure 18.3, a patient is connected to the machines with three electrical leads, one to each wrist and to the left ankle that continuously monitor the heart activity. For a detailed evaluation of the heart's function, multiple leads are attached to the chest region. Here we will talk only about a standard ECG. Each peak in the ECG is defined with a letter from P to T that corresponds to a specific electrical activity of the heart. The P wave represents the electrical excitation or depolarization of the atria which leads to the contraction of both the atria. The QRX complex represents the depolarization of the ventricles which initiates the ventricular contraction. The contraction starts shortly after Q and marks the beginning of the systole. The T wave represents the return of the ventricles from excited to normal state called repolarization. The end of the T wave marks the end of systole. Obviously, by counting the number of QRS complexes that occur in a given time period, one can determine the heartbeat rate of an individual. Since the ECGs obtained from different individuals have roughly the same shape for a given lead configuration, any deviation from this shape indicates a possible abnormality or disease. Hence, it is of great clinical significance. Topic 18.4 Double Circulation The blood flows strictly by a fixed route through blood vessels, the arteries and veins. Basically, each artery and vein consist of three layers, an inner lining of squamous endothelium, the tunica intima, a middle layer of smooth muscles and elastic fibers, the tunica media, and an external layer of fibrous connective tissue with collagen fibers, the tunica externa. The tunica media is comparatively thin in the veins, figure 18.4. As mentioned earlier, the blood pumped by the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery whereas the left ventricle pumps blood into the aorta. The deoxygenated blood pumped into the pulmonary artery is passed on to the lungs from where the oxygenated blood is carried by the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. This pathway constitutes the pulmonary circulation. The oxygenated blood entering the aorta is carried by a network of arteries, arterioles and capillaries to the tissues from where the deoxygenated blood is collected by a system of venules, veins and vena cava and emptied into to the right atrium. This is the systemic circulation, figure 18.4. The systemic circulation provides nutrients, oxygen and other essential substances to the tissues and takes CO2 and other harmful substances away for elimination. A unique vascular connection exists between the digestive tract and liver called the hepatic portal system. The hepatic portal vein carries blood from the intestine to the liver before it is delivered to the systemic circulation. A special coronary system of blood vessels is present in our body exclusively for the circulation of blood to and from the cardiac musculature. Topic 18.5 Regulation of Cardiac Activity 
normal activities of the heart are regulated intrinsically that is auto regulated by specialized muscles or nodal tissue hence the heart is called myogenic a special neural center in the medulla oblongata can moderate the cardiac function through autonomic nervous system Neural signals through the sympathetic nerves can increase the rate of heartbeat, the strength of ventricular contraction and thereby the cardiac output. On the other hand, parasympathetic neural signals decrease the rate of heartbeat, speed of conduction of action potential and thereby the cardiac output. Adrenal medullary hormones can also increase the cardiac output. Topic 18.6 Disorders of Circulatory System high blood pressure or hypertension hypertension is the term for blood pressure that is higher than normal 120 by 80 in this measurement 120 mm of hg is the systolic or pumping pressure and 80 mm of hg is the diastolic or resting pressure if repeated checks of blood pressure of an individual is 140 by 90 or higher it shows hypertension High blood pressure leads to heart diseases and also affects vital organs like brain and kidney. Coronary artery disease (CAD), often referred to as atherosclerosis, affects the vessels that supply blood to the heart muscle. It is caused by deposits of calcium, fat, cholesterol, and fibrous tissue, which makes the lumen of arteries narrower. Angina. It is also called angina pectoris. A symptom of acute chest pain appears when no enough oxygen is reaching the heart muscle. Angina can occur in men and women of any age but it is more common among the middle aged and elderly. It occurs due to the conditions that affect the blood flow. Heart failure. Heart failure means the state of heart when it is not pumping blood effectively enough to meet the needs of the body. It is sometimes called congestive heart failure because congestion of lungs is one of the main symptoms of this disease. Heart failure is not the same as cardiac arrest when the heart stops beating or a heart attack when the heart muscle is suddenly damaged by an inadequate blood supply. Summary: Vertebrates circulate blood, a fluid connective tissue in their body to transport essential substances to the cells and to carry waste substances from there another fluid lymph is also used for the transport of certain substances blood comprises of a fluid matrix plasma and formed elements red blood cells white blood cells and platelets constitute the formed elements blood of humans are grouped into a b ab and o systems based on the presence or absence of two surface antigens a b on the rbcs Another blood grouping is also done based on the presence or absence of another antigen called rhesus factor on the surface of RBCs. The spaces between cells in the tissues contain a fluid derived from blood called tissue fluid. This fluid called lymph is almost similar to blood except for the protein content and the formed elements. All vertebrates and a few invertebrates have a closed circulatory system. Our circulatory system consists of a muscular pumping organ, heart, a network of vessels and a fluid, blood. Heart has two atria and two ventricles. Cardiac musculature is auto excitable. SA node generates the maximum number of action potentials per minute that is 70 to 75 per minute and therefore it sets the pace of the activities of the heart hence it is called pacemaker. The action potential causes the atria and the ventricles to undergo contraction followed by their relaxation. This is stole forces the blood to move from the atria to the ventricles and to the pulmonary artery and the aorta. The cardiac cycle is formed by sequential events in the heart which is cyclically repeated and is called the cardiac cycle. A healthy person shows 72 such cycles per minute. About 70 ml of blood is pumped out by each ventricle during a cardiac cycle and it is called the stroke or beat volume. Volume of blood pumped out by each ventricle of heart per minute is called the cardiac output and is equal to the product of stroke volume and the heart rate. The electrical activity of the heart can be recorded from the body surface by using electrocardiograph and the recording is called the electrocardiogram which is of clinical importance. 
we have a complete double circulation that is two circulatory pathways namely pulmonary and systemic are present the pulmonary circulation starts by the pumping of deoxygenated blood by the right ventricle which is carried to the lungs where it is oxygenated and returned to the left atrium the systemic circulation starts with the pumping of oxygenated blood by the left ventricle to the aorta which is carried to all the body tissues and the deoxygenated blood from there is collected by the veins and returned to the right atrium though the heart is auto excitable its functions can be moderated by neural and hormonal mechanisms exercises question 1 Name the components of the formed elements in the blood and mention one major function of each of them. Question 2 What is the importance of plasma proteins? Question 3 Match the column 1 with column 2. Question 4 Why do we consider blood as a connective tissue? Question 5 What is the difference between lymph and the blood? Question 6 What is meant by double circulation? What is its significance? Question 7 Write the differences between A blood and lymph B open and closed system of circulation C systole and diastole D P wave and T wave Question 8 Describe the evolutionary change in the pattern of heart among the vertebrates Question 9 Why do we call our heart myogenic Question 10 Sinoatrial node is called the pacemaker of our heart why Question 11 What is the significance of atrioventricular node and atrioventricular bundle in the functioning of heart? Question 12. Define a cardiac cycle and the cardiac output. Question 13. Explain heart sounds. Question 14. Draw a standard ECG and explain the different segments in it.